Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Severely Mame and today I wanted to just do a little bit of a project roundup, show you all of the things that I'm working on and maybe a little bit of teasers for videos to come. Now it is the beginning of the holiday season. Yesterday was Thanksgiving. Um, I think when you're watching this it would have been a couple days ago, but I am now getting into holiday season mode. I did want to pull out one last orange and black moment before uh, I got into all, all of my red and green wear, which is a lot. But I just wanted to show you the things that I'm working on going into the holiday seasons. Actually, only one of them is uh, a little holiday oriented. The rest are just projects and like some short term, some long term of little things that I'm doing. Now, I've mentioned this in the past and I will do a whole video on it soon. But the big project I've been working on since the end of summer is my late 1940s knit suit. Now, I'm really having a moment with suits. I love them so much, especially 40s suits. I made this from a 1940s pattern. It's a reissue, but it really does read as accurate 40s pattern-wise to me. Obviously, this fabric isn't, but my inspiration for it was very... Gilbert Adrian dresses Poison Ivy from the Cramps. Uh, so I, I think I accomplished that and I'm very happy with it and I think that this will be my job interview suit. So when I have to go impress someone, I'll wear this because it's loud and kind of obnoxious to look at just like myself. So it's a good picture into what they get if they hire me. So I think it's gonna be my job interview. Yes, I'm into suits right now. I actually think in the future I'm going to do a video on my vintage suit collection. I have a good amount of suits that I've made from vintage patterns and vintage, true vintage suits. This first piece I'm going to show you is my knit suit from a late 40s pattern. The pattern is available on Subversive Femmes website in the curvy month uh, section. It is free. It has a range of sizes. I've been working on it since probably August, um, paired with other a bunch of other projects, doing work on it whenever um, I had the time. Now I feel a little bit more of a time crunch, so I'm getting far more into it. I finished all of the jacket. It is looking a little small, but I haven't blocked any of it yet. But all in all, that was a very quick pattern to work. The skirt, on the other hand, is so much yardage and is just time consuming. Luckily, there's not a ton of pattern that needs to be followed. So this is what I have done so far. It's gonna be about 28 to 29 inches long when I finish. Um, I am currently, there's 13, for my size, there's 13 decreases as I work up the skirt. I am halfway between six and seven. Um, they're every two and a quarter inch. So this is going, it's going fairly quick for what a long winded project it could be. Um, I think I'm going to break on knitting the skirt soon and I'm going to block the jacket and piece that all together. I think for that one, I'm actually going to block all the pieces and then stitch them up instead of stitching it all together and blocking it whole. Because I think the shoulders are going to be a little narrow, I really want to play with each piece and see how much give I have to give it that width that I need. Um, I knit it for a 38 to 40 inch bust. I'm a 40 inch bust. Even some vintage 48 bust pieces do not have enough shoulder to accommodate uh, my linebacker level of shoulder. Um, it is a 40s pattern and shoulder pads are supposed to be put into it. I might not make them and I might get the correct fit that way. Once I piece it together, I can make the call on if I can knit the shoulder pads, like if they'll have room for it. But right now the skirt is a little less than half done, but I'm getting there. This I'll probably be half done within the next week, if not a little bit more. I plan to wear this on Christmas Eve. I think a knit green suit for Christmas is gonna be perfect. That's why if you look at the hashtag suit for knitness on Instagram, you'll find myself and Duchess of Hutch, who I mentioned in my last video where I made the 1938 witch hat. Jess and I are also doing this knit along together. 
So that's one project right now that is been consistent, but I just wanted to give you a little update because I never did a full video just on that. And I think when I'm piecing everything together and closer to finish with the skirt, you guys will get a full video on that process. Uh, let me know below if you want to see that. Because if not, I'll just uh, finish it and I will include it in my uh, suit collection. If you do want to see more about it, I would love to make a video for you. Okay, so the next project I'm going to show you that I'm working on is this Simplicity dress pattern. It is a reprint of one of their 1940s designs. It's pattern number 8050. Uh, it is a dress that has two styles. Pretty much the sleeve length and the decoration are the only thing that are different. It zips in the front but has covered buttons uh, and a panel to disguise the zipper. I am cutting this out of some polyester green crepe that I've mentioned in the past. I bought it for a different project and I've kind of sat on it for a while. Um, and I think that this is going to be the right dress for it. It's like a say it's somewhere between sage and a light olive. I'm excited to cut this fabric. I've only cut out the paper pattern so far, so I haven't gotten into the sewing of it yet. Once I make one, uh, it may be one of, because it's a green, it may be one of my holiday dresses for this season because I think any tone of green can be a Christmas green depending on how you dress it up, but then I can wear it outside of the Christmas season and still have it make sense as just an everyday garment. I'm actually working on a little bit of a project that I might get into in a future video that I want the majority of my wardrobe to all be green. Now that I'm back to orange hair, I think green is the color that looks best on me. So I think that I just need to only make green wardrobe pieces now. What do you think about that? Is it too crazy to limit myself to just one color of garment? Let me know down in the comments what you think. There's the Green Lady of Brooklyn. If you haven't heard of her, look her up. She is adorable. She wears only green. Her house is only green. She has green hair. I love her. Um, so I feel a little inspired by her and I feel like an all green wardrobe would just complement my orange hair so well. So let me know what you think of that down below because it does seem like a wild idea that I might really enjoy. Now the next project, if you haven't watched my 1938 witch hat video, you should do that after this. I follow my friend Jess, Duchess of Hutch on Instagram's tutorial on how she made a hat styled after a 1938 uh, Women's Weekly Australia uh, catalog photo. And it's beautiful. I followed her tutorial. I was given a little bit of critique on how I did it by a milliner who really knows what they're doing. Um, so I'm going to be making a follow-up video on correcting my mistakes from that one. I did a couple things wrong. I put a disclaimer in the video comments, um, but I'm just going to make another video where I work on a hat. So I have this black wool hood or cape line uh, that I'm going to turn into a 1940s hat. Um, I saw it on a vintage seller's site uh, or Instagram and I really loved it. So I think I'm going to figure out how to make this wool hood into a hat. And I don't want to show you the hat just yet because that will be coming up in a video because I want to correct my past mistakes on millinery um, and uh, make this fun project with you. One thing I will give you a little peek into is that not only is it going to be working with the wool hood, oh, I just knocked that right out of my hand. I'm also going to be working with some ostrich feathers that I am going to stack and curl to give a more authentic 1940s look. Now, I think that 40s hats are really known for feathers in my head. I think of either a tilt shape or something with beautiful feathers or both. So I think I'm going to show you all how I can curl and stack feathers to accomplish copying a true vintage 1940s hat to make something for myself. Now, um, if this hat wouldn't have sold, I would have probably bought it for myself through the vendor that was selling it. But it was purchased, so I thought, with vintage being such a finite resource, I just have to make things myself when I cannot 
buy them for myself. And that's, you know, I think all of us should be doing that. There's only so much 1940s or 1930s or 1950s, whatever you like, vintage out there. And then when you, like me, I'm larger, uh, especially in the shoulders than the average 1940s woman. So it gets increasingly harder for me to find things. So I'm a little more devoted these days to making my 1940s style wardrobe than I am for collecting authentic 1940s wardrobe because either I can't afford it or I can't find it. And I understand like I don't fault vintage dealers for marking it up. It's a little more rare. Uh, I just can't afford to buy it all the time. And I'm gonna come up with a couple videos on basic vintage styling and some staple pieces I think every beginner in vintage or longtime vintage wearer should have and how to style them to be even more authentic in your collection, whether they be vintage or vintage inspired or exact vintage reproductions or things that you've made. I just wanna give you my style guide on maybe some essentials, some styling, all the little pieces I think you might need to start or perfect your vintage wardrobe. So that's a coming video. Let me know below if you watched my hat making video and if you read the disclaimer in the description of it. I might have to figure out adding, like re-uploading it with a disclaimer in the video or something um, because I don't want people to follow my incorrect directions, but I had a great time making it and I think we're gonna have a great time making this future hat. Okay, so I've saved the biggest kind of most exciting thing for last because it's gonna be probably a long time before a video comes out about this. But I think all of you are gonna enjoy this series. If you love vintage style, you know the 1930s and 1940s had some of the most beautiful shoes ever made. Carmen Miranda wore just the highest platforms, the most decorated shoes. Mae West wore the most interesting heels you'll ever see. Would you guys want to see a video of me going through some of my favorite, uh, like, famous vintage heels? Uh, I think that could be really fun to show you ones that inspire me um, in this future venture, which will be making my own high heels. I always have been looking for high heel lasts on the internet in my size. I was on a Facebook group where someone just mentioned the little sewing patterns to make like little daytime shoes and slippers from the 40s that you could buy. Um, and I was like, oh, I haven't look up, looked up 1940s shoe lasts in a while. And I came across this pair of 1950s factory shoe lasts in my size. I couldn't believe it, actually. They're an 11 and a half narrow. Now, I'm an 11 in, like, modern vintage reproduction shoes and heels. Uh, so I thought, well, 11 and a half narrow vintage is probably going to be about my size. I got them. I tried them into pairs of heels and shoes that I have. They seem to fit and be about the right size. So I'm going to venture in to making my own high heels. I of course want to make high 40s platforms and highly decorated shoes for stage. I think that that is in my mind like truly the epitome of glamour. Like Dita Von is having custom shoes for all of her costumes is my dream. And you know, I am not yet friendly with Christian Louboutin, so I think that I'm just gonna have to make my own heels for a while. So I've got these last, they've got a two and a half inch heel on them, which um, when paired with a platform, I can have a three and a half to four inch heel, um, which will just give me enough height. Higher than that on stage, I really don't need. Um, I'm not a dancer. I don't like, I like to have a comfortable, but beautiful shoe when I'm performing, if I ever get to perform again in person, you know. But all in all, I'm very excited about this. I will of course do some videos on my progress that will not be instructional, but I will just be showing you what I do. There's resources out there, but not a ton. So I'm even struggling a little bit with what I'm doing 
Um, but as I figure things out, I'm just going to walk you through the process of what I do. So here are my 1950s factory shoe lasts in an 11 and a half narrow to make my future vintage high heels. So now that I'm wrapping up my current projects, I wanted to ask all of you for help. I've had you answer a few questions down below as this video has gone on, but I have a little bit more that I want to know from you. So I have given you all kinds of different content here on my YouTube channel. There is makeup tutorials, there is vintage drag, makeup tutorials slash history lessons, there is sewing videos, Disney trips, some personal like vlogging and life updates, some hair, some knitting. <laughs> I like to make things. Um, and I like to make YouTube videos for you guys. So I'd love to know what you guys want to see here on my channel. Let me know what works best for you. I know that my 1940s patch pocket skirt tutorial has gone over really well and people have followed it and made the skirts and shown me them. And then I've also, my wig making video series didn't go over as well, but also I realize it's very specific. So I want to hear from you guys. Let me know down in the comments what kind of content you are looking for because I love doing all kinds of things and I'd love to share that with all of you. If it's makeup, I'll do some more makeup tutorials for you. I did not finish my uh, vintage drag series. I hit a little bit of a like research bump in the road. I kind of couldn't find a ton of information for one era. Uh, and then I just had to keep going so I can go back to that if people want it. I just want you to know that I want to make content that you want to see. So let me know down below what you're looking for specifically. If you want to see how I brush my hair out with this wig, I'll show you. If you want to see, you know how I do my makeup, let me know. But all in all, thank you so much for watching. I am Severely Mame. Make sure to like and subscribe. Follow the link below for my Patreon to see exclusive content, and I'll see you all next week.